हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एज वी नो डायरिया इज द मोस्ट कॉमन इलनेस ऑफ ट्रेवलर्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस फीचर्स ऑफ ट्रेवलर्स डायरिया टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रेवलर्स डायरिया इट्स मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन पॉजिटिव एजेंट्स पैथोफिजियोलॉजी थेरेपी दैट इज मैनेजमेंट एंड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ ट्रेवलर्स डायरिया now travelers diarrhea is the most common and uh, predictable travel related disease it develops while traveling abroad or within 10 days of returning from any resource limited destination that is returning from either a developing country or a rural area now travelers diarrhea is defined as a passage of three or more than three unformed stools uh, that is loose watery stools per 24 hours along with other symptoms like uh, nausea vomiting abdominal cramps now symptoms like fever blood or mucus in the stools and fecal urgency are observed in severe travelers diarrhea like for example dysentery where there is intestinal inflammation especially in the colon now a majority of cases of travelers diarrhea are mild and self limited therefore treatment is mostly not required and if treatment is given the treatment is supportive now diarrhea usually last for less than 2 weeks and therefore it is termed as acute diarrhea so travelers diarrhea is a, a type of acute diarrhea now different types of travelers diarrhea it can be mild it can be moderate or it can be severe so mild acute travelers diarrhea is tolerable is not uh, distressing and it does not interferes with the plant activities now talking about the moderate moderate acute travelers diarrhea is distressing that is it disturbs the patient it can cause anxiety and it can also interfere with the plant activities now severe diarrhea is incapacitating and uh, it completely prevents plant activity now one of the examples of uh, severe travelers diarrhea is dysentery where there is inflammation of colon and bloody mucoid stools are produced a uh, mode of transmission of uh, travelers diarrhea it develops by eating food or drinking water contaminated with bacteria virus and protozoa Now travelers uh, diarrhea is usually acquired by fecal oral transmission of the causative uh, pathogen typically through ingestion of food or water contaminated with the feces Now infectious agents include bacteria the most common bacterial agent is the enterotoxigenic e coli responsible for about 30 to 60% cases of travelers diarrhea now in this infection watery diarrhea is uh, seen and other common uh, bacteria that cause travelers diarrhea are campylobacter jejuni uh, shigella species salmonella species and uh, these bacteria uh, they produce inflammatory diarrhea they cause inflammation of colon and therefore blood and mucus is seen in the stools so bloody uh, diarrhea is seen with fever urgency and abdominal cramps then uh, viral agents like uh, norovirus rotavirus astrovirus and enteric adenovirus now norovirus and rotavirus they cause vomiting then uh, protozoal parasites infection these infections are uh, very uh, less common and uh, most common common protozoa that produces travelers diarrhea is the giardia lambia and here the diarrhea persist or the diarrhea last for about 2 weeks or more than 2 weeks uh, now let's uh, discuss pathophysiology of uh, travelers diarrhea uh, travelers diarrhea is caused by increased secretion and or decreased absorption of fluid fluids and electrolytes across the intestinal epithelium now let's first understand how non invasive bacteria produce diarrhea now here we have given the examples of uh, enterotoxigenic e coli that is e t e c bacteria and vibrio cholera both these uh, bacteria are non invasive bacteria that means they do not invade mucosal epithelial cells these bacteria produce toxins and these toxins increase secretion and reduce absorption of water and electrolytes thus producing diarrhea 
Now, anterotoxigenic E. coli produces heat stable endotoxin, while Vibrio cholera produces cholera toxin. And these bacteria produce a mostly mild, self limiting, loose, watery diarrhea. Now, uh, look at this diagram. Uh, this di diagram clearly explains how non invasive uh, bacteria increase secretion of fluoride ions and reduce absorption of uh, sodium and water leading to diarrhea. Now this diagram shows an intestinal cell. Now toxins that are released from non-invasive bacteria increase the intracellular levels of cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP and calcium. Now increased cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP activate CFTR chloride channels. Activation of CFTR chloride channels increases chloride secretion in the lumen of the intestine. Now apart from this, increased calcium further activates calcium activated chloride channel and there is further increase in the secretion of chloride ions in the intestinal lumen. So this is how uh, secretion of chloride ions in the lumen is increased. Now, apart from this, increased in the increase in the level of uh, cyclic GMP, cyclic AMP, and calcium also inhibit sodium hydrogen exchanger three, that is NHE three, which inhibits uh, reabsorption of sodium. So these agents or these messengers they inhibit uh, reabsorption of sodium and water. So on one hand, uh, these toxins increase the secretion of chloride ions in the intestinal lumen. On the other hand, these toxins which are produced by non-invasive bacteria, they reduce or they inhibit reabsorption of sodium and fluids in the intestinal cells. Apart from this, uh, toxins also increase release of 5-hydroxytryptamine uh, from anterochromaffin cells. And uh, further, there is increase in the level of cyclic GMP, cyclic uh, AMP and further increasing the secretion of fluoride ions and inhibiting the absorption of sodium ions and water. So thus, there is increase in the secretion of chloride ions and there is inhibition of uh, sodium and fluid absorption uh, causing diarrhea. So this is how non-invasive bacteria produce uh, traveler's diarrhea. Now uh, let's understand how invasive bacteria produce diarrhea. Now Shigella and Campylobacter, these are the two invasive bacteria, they invade the intestinal cell. This is uh, in the figure is shown the intestinal cell. So they invade the intestinal cell and they stimulate release of pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrotic factor, interleukin-6, interleukin-8. Now these cytokines on one hand produce ulcers, they produce ulcers in the intestine, they cause ulceration and destruction of mucosa. On the other hand, uh, these uh, cytokines, they uh, increase the levels of calcium inside the intestinal cells. Now this increased calcium as we have seen earlier, enhance chloride secretion in the intestinal lumen and reduce absorption of uh, sodium ions and uh, uh, water inside the intestinal cell and therefore increased in the secretion of fluoride ions and reduced absorption of fluid and uh, sodium ions results in the diarrhea. Uh, now let's uh, understand how the virus produces diarrhea. Here we have taken the example of uh, anteric rotavirus. Anteric a rotavirus produces antirotoxin. So this antirotoxin it uh, increases cytoplasmic calcium. Now increase in the cytoplasmic calcium stimulates calcium activated chloride channels thereby increasing the chloride secretion in the intestinal lumen. Apart from this, uh, this uh, increased calcium inhibits uh, sodium glucose co-transporter 1 and inhibits sodium hydrogen exchanger 3 thereby inhibiting uh, sodium reabsorption. So there is inhibition of sodium absorption. So uh, these 
uh, viral toxins on one hand increase chloride secretion in the intestinal human on the other hand they cause reduced absorption of uh, fluid and electrolytes uh, that is the sodium ions in the intestinal cells and this results in diarrhea Uh, now let's uh, discuss the management of uh, traveler's diarrhea. Uh, first let's talk about the therapy for mild traveler's diarrhea. Now a majority of the cases are mild and they are self-limited. They do not require any treatment as such. Uh, now correction of dehydration that is water and electrolyte loss because of the diarrhea is a mainstay of treatment and it, it is accompanied by the uh, administration of oral rehydration solution so administration of oral rehydration solution is must in uh, diarrhea now apart from this uh, short term administration or the short term use of uh, anti secretory or anti motility agents uh, may be considered if required uh, for example loperamide now these agents they shorten the duration and severity of diarrhea now it should be remembered that uh, loperamide should not be given to children uh, less than or equal to 2 years of age. Now antibiotic treatment is not recommended in patients with uh, mild traveler's diarrhea. Then uh, therapy for moderate uh, traveler's diarrhea as uh, discussed earlier administration of oral rehydration solution is must. Now loperamide may be used as a monotherapy or as an adjuvant therapy for moderate uh, traveler's diarrhea. However, it should be avoided in patients with high fever, uh, severe abdominal cramps or dysentery because of the risk of uh, toxic megacolon or because of the risk of uh, intestinal perforation and it should also not uh, to be given to the children. Then antimicrobial therapy uh, may be used as it is effective in reducing duration and severity of traveler's diarrhea. Now fluoroquinolones such as uh, ciprofloxacin, uh, levofloxacin and ofloxacin are highly efficacious. Now uh, these uh, fluoroquinolones they should not be given if the patient is suffering from dysentery that is a severe traveler's diarrhea where uh, the stools uh, they show presence of mucus and blood. Then uh, azithromycin in patients uh, resistant to fluoroquinolones azithromycin is effective and uh, it can be given to the patient suffering from dysentery. Then uh, rifaximin uh, it is another alternative however it should not be used in dysentery. Uh, now talking about the therapy for uh, severe traveler's diarrhea. Uh, administration of oral rehydration solution is a must. Apart from this antibiotics uh, should be used. Now azithromycin can be uh, used uh, even if uh, the patient is suffering from dysentery. Now fluoroquinolones uh, they can be used in severe uh, but uh, non dysentric traveler's diarrhea. Now apart from this uh, rifaximin may be used to treat uh, severe non dysentric uh, traveler's diarrhea. Now if the patient suffers from protozoal infection uh, like the giardia then uh, metronidazole or tinidazole may be administered. Now our next is the uh, adjuvant therapy. Uh, administration of uh, probiotics is found to be very useful. Uh, now these probiotics that is live microorganisms when administered in adequate amounts uh, they benefit uh, they provide benefit to the patient in diarrhea. Now these probiotics are dietary supplements uh, containing beneficial bacteria that strengthen the digestive system and provide immunity to the body. Now probiotics like uh, lactobacillus rhamnosus, lactobacillus acidophilus and saccharomyces boulardii exhibit beneficial effects on intestinal flora and suppress pathogenic uh, bacteria and are found to be useful in prevention of diarrhea. Uh, now let's talk about the prophylaxis or the prevention of traveler's diarrhea. 
Now, a majority of diarrheal diseases can be prevented by the implementation of water sanitization and hygiene, that is a wash program, aiming at interrupting fecal oral route of transmission. Now, here frequently washing hands with soap or washing hands with alcohol based detergents, hand sanitizers, and with clean water available, especially after using toilets and before preparing or eating food is very important. Now, avoid high risk products like creamy desserts, salads, cold sauces, raw and leafy vegetables, fruits, uh, raw meat, unpasteurized dairy products, uh, then unclean tap water. Now, apart from this, uh, rifaximin is effective and safe. It is a drug of choice for the prevention of traveler's diarrhea and uh, uh, azithromycin and fluoroquinolones are not recommended for prophylaxis. Now, vaccines are also very important. Uh, Vexcora, a live attenuated single dose oral cholera vaccine is recommended for people traveling to areas where cholera is epidemic or endemic. Then uh, typhoid vaccine is recommended for tra travelers to areas with uh, poor sanitation and poor hygiene. Uh, rotavirus, a common cause of uh, traveler's diarrhea, can also be prevented by uh, rotavirus vaccination. Very important, please note that all medications should be consumed in consultation with your physician. So, this is in brief on traveler's diarrhea. This video is meant only to provide general information on traveler's diarrhea, not for treatment. For treatment of traveler's diarrhea, kindly consult your physician. Now, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.